it's important to understand the basics in order to avoid mistakes and ensure that your investigation is accurate. Let's quickly review them. To begin with, the usual public procurement procedure looks like this. Tender, award and execution. It is vital to distinguish between these three steps and the different prices they refer to. The tender price, the maximum amount a public body is willing to pay, is not the same as the award price, the final price to be paid to the company. Sometimes we see articles with, uh, with headlines such as government spends 1 million euros, referring to the tender price, but this is just the available budget, and companies tend to lower that price in their bids. We also have to keep in mind that after signing the contract, prices can change thanks to amendments. Here, cost overruns are just so common. A contract can be amended whenever this is clearly, accurately and unquestionably provided for in the initial documents or when exceptional and unpredictable things happen during its performance. For example, a contract is awarded to a company because it was the cheapest bid, but at the end it gets, it gets paid more than its competitors. Are all procurement procedures the same? No. They might be open or closed. The two most common types are the open procedure and the negotiated procedure. In the open procedure, the call to tender is open and public, as the name suggests. Any company that can enter into contracts with the authorities and that meets the established experience and solvency requirements can submit a bid. With the negotiated procedure, the successful tenderer is chosen after consulting with various candidates and negotiating the terms of the contract with one or more of them. There are two types. The negotiated procedure with publication, in which the call to tender is advertised, in other words, a public announcement of what is being procured before doing so, and although certain companies are invited to bid, others may ask to participate. Then we have the negotiated procedure without publication. This can be used for certain types of contracts or as necessary, for example, with because only one company can provide the goods or services. Exactly when it can be used in each case depends on national legislation. Normally, this procedure is exploited to sidestep open competition and transparency and to award the contract to a hand-picking tender. Deadlines are also a key factor in the procurement procedure. The less time companies are given to find out about the call to tender, submit bids and have them consider, the more likely it is uh, that corruption seeps through or the best offer isn't the one chosen. As a rule, there is an ordinary procedure with standard deadlines and then there are urgent or emergency procedure. The latter is very important, for example, in cases such as the COVID-19 crisis. Most European countries use emergency procedures to procure the necessary services or equipment. These contracts were often awarded directly, even paid upfront arbitrarily without due procedure with barely no transparency and often the information was published very late. In most cases, there are no details on these contracts. In the second video, we spoke about the European harmonized framework for major contracts. However, there are also thresholds to regulate contracts that come in under rather than above. For contracts for small sums, the general procurement rules do not apply. They can be awarded directly to a company without a call to tender or a worse procedure or without publication of all the contract details. Thus, you can hire whichever company you like and only sometimes publish the relevant information. And much less data is published for these contracts than for all the others. Often the price and the successful tender and a mention of what the contract is for. Here are the thresholds, for example, in four European countries. Below these prices, this minor contract procurement procedure can be used to basically handpick the tender. And that's it. In the next video, we'll be explaining how you can create stories from public procurement data.